Hi, I'm James Sykes, CEO, President, and Director of Baseload Energy Corp. We are a uranium exploration company in the Athabasca Basin area. Our strategy is looking for near-surface high-grade uranium mineralization, things that we believe would go into mining scenario very quickly. And we believe that we are achieving this with our Accio discovery. Recently, we put out some very exciting news, 0.9% over 30 meters, starting within 100 meters of surface. So it is definitely very encouraging. And here to ask the the questions that I'm afraid to answer is your host, Mr. Matthew Gordon. <laughs> we, we need to do an evening radio show. That's great. I love it. Um, <laughs> thanks for the introduction. Very kind. Um, right. You're excited about what you just put out. Market, not so much. What are they missing? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I don't think we could have put this, made this any clearer. It was one drill hole. The results were top notch follows up with two other holes that we had amazing results with holes 51 and 52. So it starts forming this, this nice, uh, this nice pod that's starting right at the, the overburden contact. So less than 30 meters from surface, true vertical depth, you know, in, in what we're trying to achieve and bring a deposit forward into a mining scenario, it doesn't get better than that. So I, I really don't know what the investors are missing. I, I, I keep reading that people want to, people, don't think we have high grade because they keep seeing this magical Athabasca number. Oh, you have to have more than 1%. You have to have more than 2%. You know, theoretically, people, if you want to mine underground in the sandstone in the Athabasca, you need to have more than 20%. <laughs> so you know, what's high grade? It's all a relative term. But, you know, we what, what, what do you mean by that? Background. What do you mean by that? Okay. Um, people, I think you're right. I think people, certainly the feedback from, uh, to us was, ah, oh, it's less than a percent. That's not high grade. That's low grade, in fact, um, compared to your neighbors next door in the basin. We've got much, much higher grade. So, what are you, what are you trying to say? Um, isn't grade king here? That has been the motto of the Athabasca for decades. Absolutely. And I was brought into that motto as well. But I've quickly learned that that is not the reality of the situation. Yeah, you can make a discovery and your grades can be phenomenal. But isn't the idea of what we're all trying to achieve is to have a mine? not just make a discovery, not just have a deposit. You know, the way I'm a nuclear bull, so I believe this world needs needs nuclear energy and we need the fuel to, to bring it forward. So having a discovery is not enough. We need to discover a mine. And that's the big differentiation. The history of the Athabasca, the early days of it, were all supported by open pitable, low grade uranium. We're talking grades between 0.2 to 0.4%. Those were all economic, whereas things that are 1%, 2%, 5% were still not economic because they were too deep in the sandstone. And there's there's just too many issues with that. So grade, grade is king on the deposit side. Yes, it adds tonnage. But when you want to go that step further and get into a mineability scenario, no. Okay, this is, a, this is an interesting conversation to have because uh, you, you, you want to build a mine. I want to make money. Right, I want to. I want a mine that can make money. That's that's the name of the. That's what normal businesses do outside of the public arena, right? So you're you're saying that historically some of the lower grade open purple stuff were economic, but perhaps some of the stuff which were, well, sounds like ten times the grade were not able to. Are you saying that is the case today? That is the case today, as there are a number of Athabasca deposits that were discovered between the sixties and seventies with over 2% average grades, and they still stay in the ground. They have, one of my earliest experiences was with uh, with Hathor Exploration, who was bought out by Rio Tinto. We're working on Rough Rider. That whole Rough Rider, Jason trend, that's, that's close to 100 million pounds. If not, it is 100 million pounds. That's a sizable deposit. But it starts at about 200 meters depth from the surface. It's got too much sandstone on top. There are too many water infiltration issues. They can't pull it out of the ground. That was the first place I've ever seen 80% uranium. You know, I don't think there's many people in this world who can say they've held 80% of the commodity they're interested in. But we had 80% uranium in drill core over a meter. And in a couple areas too. And it just, that, that should be brought out of the ground. But you can't because it's just, there are too many variables at play on the, the mining engineering side of things that make it stay in the ground. Right, so, 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 so to kind of, 
You've made an announcement today. You're happy with it. You, you, you think people should be pleased with it. And so um, I, we will get back to it, but I'm, I just want to stick with this so I understand what good looks like, right? So you've got a thesis of, you know, um, searching for uranium outside the Athabasca Basin, on the edges of the Athabasca Basin versus in the basin, because as you've alluded to in the past, basins do have a tendency to gather water. But what are, what are the other economic, what are the other factors which drive the economics of a uranium mine? You talked about grade, a depth, but over, you know, one meter, 80% over one meter, you've got dilution issues, you've got true width issues, you've got depth issues, water issues, but what, what, what else is there to it which can determine the success of an asset and, and, and its ability to become a mine, economic mine? A few things. One is where we are hitting our mineralization at Accio, it's right at that overburden context. So if you don't know what the overburden is, it's the glacial sediments that were deposited after the last glaciers were treated. So it's a bunch of loose consolidated sands and, and muds and clays and, and boulders all mixed in. But that's the type of stuff that doesn't require blasting. From a mining scenario, that's, you know, you push it out with heavy equipment and then you get down to your, your basement rock, your, your bedrock, which is where you would start excavating a pit. Now, with, a, with some of the recent press releases we've had, our mineralization starts right there. We've got high grade right at that, right at that point. So from, a, from an economic standpoint, you are mining, you'd be mining ore immediately. You, if whatever it would take to put in a road, which is basically going to be your only cost in an open pit scenario, and then and, and remove that overburden, you could start recovering those costs immediately. You don't have to mine down 100 meters and then start extracting your ore. You have ore immediately there. We've also got, well, we're in proximity of infrastructure too. One of the ideas we'd like to believe will help us move forward is toll milling through the Key Lake Mill, which is only 70 kilometers southwest of Accio. It's it's very close. To put a road into the, the Key Lake MacArthur Hall Road, that's 30 kilometers. Not a large stretch of the imagination. Power lines are right there. There's an airstrip at Key Lake. Everything, as far as infrastructure goes, is right there. It is... It, it, it feels like it is an easy deposit to move forward into that mining scenario and have a mill that's already there. So that's huge, that's huge capital cost saving. You don't need to build a mill, it's right there. Okay, so, so it, it's just you're in the right place. Dig it out of the ground. You're in the right place. The infrastructure is easy um, and not, not a significant burden to, to you um, get it. But let's, 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 go, let's come back to the press release, right? So the, it, you put out this, uh, release, market's gone, whatever. You've got to sort of explain, well, potentially you need to understand the different types of mining operations and the, and therefore grade is not the only factor. I buy that. But what do you now need to do to show that you can deliver on some of the other variables which you've just talked about? And that, you know, show because scale, scale um, is going to be one, one of those things. You're going to need to drill a bunch more holes. You know, so how are you coming at this? We do. We need to drill many more holes. We need to get to that resource estimate stage, which is one of the major accomplishments that we need to achieve by, I'm hoping, by next year. We thought we could do it by the end of this year. It just didn't turn out. We, need, re, we do require more drilling in this. But we also want to get going on having a flow, having a flow chart of the steps that would be required to see this project advance into a mining scenario. There aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of requirements necessary in an open pit scenario versus a, versus an underground shaft type of operation. So we do see that as being benefit, but we want to get we want to get a jump on this. So these are some of the steps that we are starting to make. We've got to look at metallurgy as well. How easy is it to extract the, the uranium from the rocks? From what we can tell, just based on a preliminary geochemical standpoint, it looks like it is. It, it's pretty simplistic because we know that the uh, lower, uh, less, less acidic type of, of fluids can release over ninety percent of the uranium in these rocks. So that's perfect. That's the type of uranium that we want to see. It's not locked up in a mineral that requires high caustic, uh, high caustic acids to dissolve the mineral and then get your uranium out of it. So. We're in a good scenario on that point, but we still need to do a little bit of more metallurgy side on that. 
we could even do some a couple more things. We could we could do some some bulk uh, bulk testing and, and hydrology in the coming year, twelve to twenty four months. But another thing that we are looking at is looking at ore sorting ore sorting technology already. As originally when we were seeing the grades, we we're around that 0.1, percent. So we figured that hey, if we can up blend this after it gets mined out. And then you ship it off to the mill, you've got less dilution if you're upgrading your ore. So that is something we are currently investigating right now. Interesting, so. interesting, interesting. Okay, um, how's money at the moment? Because it, it get, actually, the question I actually want to ask is, is it slightly disappointing when the market just goes, whatever, I don't understand, I don't care, and you don't get that bump that you kind of hope for when you, have, when you see moments like this? Because you're saying you understand the importance of this. The market does not. Does it change your... The way that the way that you go about delivering this picture that you're trying to paint for these for for the, for these shareholders and other people looking in. In a way, it does. Um, for the most part, no. But one of the reasons why we did curtail our exploration season and, and kind of brought it to an end earlier this year was because of that. We weren't getting any love in the market for what we believe to be very excellent results, things that we wanted to see. And I have to admit that the assay results that we've been releasing have far exceeded my expectations from what we had released via the CPS, uh, the, the scintillometer results. So far more encouraged with what we're seeing at, at Accio. But how can, how can we get the investor community to really understand what we have uh, through talks like this if they don't understand the, the results as per the drill holes? Um, you know, when you see one drill hole come out, I think that's usually a good sign that that is a that's a whopper. Like that thing had over 25 GT. Hole 69 has over 25 grade thickness calculation to it, and that's very encouraging. That is uh, a quite a phenomenal intercept. So it, it, it can't get any more simplistic than that. I think people just have to start realizing: get rid of the high grade idea that you need one percent in the Athabasca. You know, if it's not quite there, but we will. We'll, we'll we'll keep moving along because we internally we know that this is a very special project. We know that we've got a lot of good things going to it. We do want to see this move forward beyond just being a deposit. Right. So, so where, where where can we look? Where where, where can us uh, uh, you know great unwashed looking in at you going? Okay, you're excited, but I don't understand why. Are there are there peers to this? Are there analogous cases to this, either historic or new, where you can say, do you know what? This could be like X company, which worked. It succeeded. The economics were there. So do you know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we are working on. The best comparison I think that we could make would be to the Rabbit Lake deposit, which was about 35, 40 million pounds around that average grade between 0.3, 0.4%. So again, not your typical Athabasca grades, but it was mineable. It had a very high grade, um, high grade uh, center to it with a low grade envelope as well. But it was near surface and they mined it open pit. And that's what started a lot of the mining operations in, in the Athabasca. That was one of the first mines in the whole Athabasca area. It built the mill that allowed for other open pits and the whole Eagle Point underground mining system to move forward. Okay, Rabbit Lake is the analogy. People should go and look at that, try and understand it better. But, but you've also then got a job to do in terms of simplifying. Because I tell you what, the uranium doesn't have to make it complicated with the different ways that you guys report this stuff. It's very, very hard to do, do peer analysis. Um, but you guys have got a better job to do in terms of painting that picture for us either through you know the, the graphics or actually perhaps understanding what happens a little bit further downstream with you know with the additional drilling and all the other work or a network or other work other, other work that you're doing to say well this is how this thing becomes a mine this is how easy it is to become a mine for us and one that is economic fair enough it's on the agenda, my friend. It is on the agenda, trying to get there. Good, 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 good. Hey, well, look, I um, just want to check in because we thought it would be good news. I think it is good news. I'm, I'm looking at this going, yeah, actually, you know what? We're, we're super, super excited for you. Um, I think this, if you get more of this, that's, you know, it's, it's quite meaningful. But you've got to persuade everyone else out there, not just me. So um, keep, keep it going and we'll uh, see you soon, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Take care.